today we'll be showing you how to configure eVPN on Juniper. So if you remember our previous labs, we did a normal MPLS setup, we did a layer three VPN setup, we even did a VPLS setup, and today we are going to configure an eVPN layer two VPN. So what we've got here is we've got a CPE at site A, we've got a CPE at site B, and the goal of this lab is to have these two devices communicate with each other over a layer two VPN. Each CPE is connected to its own site router, site router A and site router B. Then we also have two root reflectors. If you want to see how we got here, I'll put that in the top right hand corner right now for you to go watch. We did a whole series on how to configure your first ISP or how to set up your first ISP so I'm not going to go into too much detail there so what we'll do is we'll first start with the config on CPE site A if we do a show display set you'll see that we don't have uh, very much going on here we've got an interface which says uplink to router A we've got a VLAN of 512 on there and an IP address 192.168.10.1 slash 24. So the security zone still says a VPLS. So we can just go ahead and replace pattern. So we're going to replace pattern VPLS with eVPN. So this is not needed. This is just purely for identification purposes. This is a security zone on this site uh, ACPE, which is an SRX firewall. And we're just going to do the same on this side. We'll just do a replace pattern VPLS with eVPN. And we do a commit. All right, so the config on site a CPE is pretty much the same as on site B CPE. If we do a show display set, you'll see here we have an interface uplink to router B. We are also tagging VLAN 512 there and an IP address of 192.168.10.2 slash 24. So just to make sure that uh, this is not working, so we do a run ping 192.168.10.2. So as you can see, the packet is not traversing the network. If we have a look at uh, site A's config, we do a show display set. There's not much going on here. So we have uh, interfaces obviously configured for backbone and then an interface connecting to the CPE. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. You can pause here if you want any info. We'll go to site router B. We'll do a show display set and we can do the same here. And then these two routers are just my root reflectors. So no routing instances are being configured on here. So that's the config for root reflector one. And this is the config for root reflector. No, not like that. Show display set. So, and this is the config for root reflector two. So we'll first start our config on site router A. So the first thing you want to do is you need to enable eVPN in your BGP protocol. So you'll notice that it's already enabled on the other routers. I just want to show you if you enable it that your BGP actually flaps. So what we do is we do set uh, protocols BGP group and on this router we've got the iBGP servers. Then we specify family eVPN signaling. Right, so if we do a run show BGP summary, you can see my BGP is up. Now at the moment I do a commit, we do a run show BGP summary again, you'll see that the BGP has actually flapped. And that's why it's so important to get your families right from the start. So when you plan your ISP setup, make sure that you've got all the families that you need, even the families that you don't think you'll need, maybe you'll need them at a later time, just configure all the families that you require for your ISP. So if we go into top edit protocols BGP, let me just show you all the families we got here. So we've got fam family INET any, got family INET VPN any, family layer 2 VPN signaling that was for our VPLS, and now we've got family eVPN signaling. So we'll just wait for this BGP to come back up, run show BGP summary. As soon as it's up, we can actually start with our config. Right, so now that our BGP is up, what we can do is we can go top edit interfaces GE002. So we'll just do a show. This is the uplink to CPE A. So the first thing we are going to do is we're going to enable VLAN tagging. So set VLAN tagging. Right, then we are going to set the encapsulation. So I am using 
encapsulation flexible Ethernet services. This just gives you the, the best flexibility, pardon the pun. You can then go ahead and configure different uh, logical units with different encapsulations, etc. if you use flexible Ethernet services. So I'm just going to use that for now. Then we are going to edit unit zero. We are going to set the unit zero encapsulation as VLAN bridge. Right, and then we are going to give it a VLAN ID. So set VLAN ID 512. The reason why we use 512 is obviously the CPE uses 512 on both sides. Right, so going back to the site router, you just do, do a show. Sorry, we can go up and do a show. This will show the full interface config. Right, and that's pretty much it for the interface config. Now, you won't be able to commit this config. You need to configure a bridge domain or EVPN and attach this interface to it. So we'll go ahead and do that just now. So top edit uh, routing instances. And we are going to name this routing instance EVPN. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set instance type, instance type as EVPN. Right, and then we're going to configure a root distinguisher. Root distinguisher, we are going to use our 65535, which is our AS, and colon 512, which is our VLAN. This is just uh, easier for me to identify. Then the next thing we are going to do is we're going to configure a root target. So we do VRF target, and once again, this is the format, 65535 colon 512. So once again, the local AS and the VLAN ID. Now we need to go ahead and attach this interface. So we set interface GE002.0. Remember the dot zero. And this is pretty much it. Now you need to configure protocol EVPN under this routing instance. So we just go edit protocols EVPN. And in here we are just going to re-specify the interface. So set interface GE, no, GE002. For some reason, doesn't want to autocomplete, so GE002.0. We just do a show under the routing instance, and that is your full routing instance configuration. Now, this is very basic EVPN. We'll discuss more extensive EVPN configs in later videos. This is just to get a basic EVPN up and running between two sites. Now, if we've done everything correct, we should be able to commit this config, and it's going through. Right, so now we can just literally replicate all this onto site router B. I'm not going to bore you with that once again. I'm just going to copy and paste the, all the config that I've just uh, done for router A. And we are just going to paste it onto router B. I'll just do a load set relative terminal. See if it takes all the config in one go. And that's it. So we do a commit. Right, so technically our EVPN should be up and running now. How you can check that, you can just do a run show EVPN instance extensive. And what you'll see here is we'll have a neighbor, which is one neighbor, an address of 172.16.0.2, which is site B router. We are learning no Macs or IPs from there just yet. But here you can see that we have a normal single homed EVPN. So if we go to CPE site A, what we can do is we can do a run ping, or you can just uh, do that, and the ping should work, right? So it's going to 10.2. Now we can just do the reverse. We do a run ping 192.168.10.1, and this should also go through. Now if we run the same command, we should see MAC addresses on here. And as you can see, our address or neighbor 172.16.0.2 has got one MAC. If you want to see what uh, root and MAC is actually being learned, you can just do a run show root table, table EVPN. And you can see we have uh, BGP roots. If we have a look here, you'll see that we have a MAC address of 0001. And the next hop is 10.10.10.2, which is router B. Go to site B, and we can do a run show, show interfaces. And if we look for this MAC address, 001 is on GE000. Right, so that means that our MAC learning is working as expected. 
I mean, the traffic is working, so that uh, comes as no surprise. And then if you want just some more info on your eVPN, you can just do a run show eVPN statistics. You type in instance and the instance name. In our case, it's eVPN. So this will actually show you the type of packets and how many packets actually traversed over this network by eVPN. Now we can make sure that it is increasing. We can just do this and do a pipe refresh three. So this means that the screen will refresh every three seconds. So now if we restart our ping here, we can just go back to site route to A and we should see these numbers increasing. And there you go. So that means that our eVPN is working as expected. Right, so what we did in this lab was obviously we configured an eVPN routing instance between these two site routers, site router A and site router B. We've got a CPE connected to site router A and a CPE connected to site router B. And now we have a layer two connection connecting these two routers. Now, eVPN is probably not going to be your first choice if you only have two sites that need to be connected, but you can then expand your eVPN to include multiple sites. So once again, this is just a single homed eVPN instance. You can configure multiple uh, things for your eVPN. You can configure ESI lags, you can configure multi-homing. It's got uh, better a loop detection, etc. This is just a very basic eVPN config, and we just wanted to show you how to get it up and running on a Juniper device. Right, and that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and as always, we hope to see you guys in the next one.